Hello, you are watching the Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at the headlines. UN IPCC releases report on climate mitigation. Israeli forces escalate violence at Damascus Gate. Indigenous Terra Livre pro protest begins in Brazil. Colombian progressive candidate faces death threats. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has released the final part of its sixth assessment report. Following earlier reports on climate science, impact and adaptation, the final text focuses on mitigation. It states that global greenhouse emissions have continued to rise over the past 10 years. In 2019, the global net anthropogenic greenhouse emissions were 54% higher as compared to 1990. Current policies have put the world on track for global warming between 2.2 and 3.5 degrees Celsius in the next 80 years. Warming beyond the 1.5 degrees Celsius threshold will lead to a drastic rise in heat waves, floods and other disasters. In order to have a 50% chance of sticking to this threshold, emissions must be halved by 2030. The IPCC states that this is possible provided there is an immediate change in policy across sectors, governments and countries. 36 countries have been successful in reducing emissions. Carbon cutting, renewable technologies have also become cheaper. The least developed countries or LDCs emitted only 3.3% of global emissions in 2019. They have contributed less than 0.4% of total historical carbon dioxide emissions from fossil fuels and industry between 1850 and 2019. The IPCC report stresses the need for equity and financial support for developing countries. The Global North has repeatedly tried to downplay the differences in emission contributions and how this must shape responsibility. According to Climate Home, a graph showing the different financing needs of developing countries was excluded from the report summary. This summary also boosts techno fixes and carbon capture schemes. These are schemes that have been rejected by activists and experts for potential harm to local communities. Israeli violence against Palestinian worshippers continued for the third night in Jerusalem on April 4th. People gather in the Damascus Gate area every day during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. Israeli forces often ban such gatherings by erecting barricades and using brutal force to disperse Palestinians. On April 3rd, Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid visited the Damascus Gate. The action was widely condemned, with Hamas calling it a provocative incursion. Hundreds of Palestinians gathered in the area on Sunday evening. However, Israeli forces soon deployed tear gas, stun grenades and rubber-coated bullets. According to the Red Crescent, at least 19 people were injured. At least 14 others were also arrested. The violence witnessed this week is similar to the weeks-long repression that happened in 2021. Protests had spread against the expulsion of Palestinians from Sheikh Jarrah and attacks on the Al-Aqsa Mosque. According to local sources, at least six Palestinians were arrested on Monday night. Three of them were detained by undercover Israeli special forces. This year has witnessed an escalation of violence by Israel. According to the Quds News Network, at least 31 Palestinians have been killed since the start of 2022. 17 people were killed in March alone. The Palestinian Health Ministry also released its report on casualties during 2021. 355 Palestinians were killed and at least 16,500 were injured by Israeli forces last year. Among those killed were at least 87 children. Indigenous peoples have started gathering in Brazil's capital for the 18th Acampamento Terra Livre. Considered the biggest mobilization in the country, it is expected to bring together around 8,000 people. The 10-day protest is being held under the banner Retaking Brazil, Demarcating Territories and Village Politics. Indigenous communities have gathered to defend their lands against the far-right Jair Bolsonaro government. The Terra Livre camp has been organized by the Articulation of Indigenous People of Brazil, or APIB. 
it is taking place just as a National Congress debates certain bills which APIB has called Projects of Death. An urgent focus has been placed on Bill 191-2020. This will open up indigenous lands to mining, agribusiness and hydroelectric dam projects. The bill was approved for fast-track processing by the Chamber of Deputies on March 9. President Bolsonaro has weakened environmental conservation laws and overseen a drastic rise in deforestation in the Amazon. A record 629 square kilometers of the forest was destroyed in January and February. Bolsonaro has also pursued anti-indigenous policies, publicly declaring that he would not demarcate even one centimeter of indigenous land. In 2019, one year after he took office, invasions into indigenous territories had increased by 135 percent. Violence against indigenous communities doubled. The Supreme Court is also set to resume hearings on the landmark temporal framework. This will be detrimental for around 800 indigenous land claims. And for a final story, Colombia's vice presidential candidate Francia Marque has denounced renewed death threats against her. 40-year-old Marque is a renowned Afro-Colombian environmental activist and lawyer. She is contesting the upcoming election as a running mate of presidential candidate Gustavo Petro. Both belong to the left-wing historic pact coalition. Recent polls have indicated that the duo are favored to win the May election with 37% of voting preference. However, this is the third time that Marque has warned of threats against her. Petro and Marque have denounced the lack of guarantees to conduct the campaign safely. They have demanded that far-right President Ivan Duque provide protections for political exercise. Marque has been threatened by a far-right paramilitary group called the Black Eagles. It has been operating since 2006 and has been involved in activities including extortion, illegal gold mining and land theft. Marque has warned that the group has also threatened social leaders, other candidates and legislators. She has urged Colombian authorities and organizations including the United Nations and the IACHR to look into the matter. Violence by armed groups has continued unabated in Colombia, according to the Institute of Development and Peace Studies. 48 land and rights defenders and other such figures have been killed in 2020 so far. Marquez's platform includes economic investment in rural areas hit by armed violence and the implementation of the 2016 peace agreement. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.